Grady Renfro loved soccer. He began playing at age five and was rarely seen far from a soccer ball. After school, on, on days like when I didn't have practice, I'd be out there until dark, I guess, hitting the ball against the wall like repeatedly. Grady wanted to play soccer in college, and he had his eye on some Division I programs. But right before his crucial senior season, he noticed that something wasn't right. He had a lump on his neck that started to grow. I guess I noticed it maybe a year before, and it just kind of kept growing, kept growing, kept growing until we really got concerned about it. It kind of poo-pooed it at first because we thought, well, you know, you, you get infections, uh, it's probably nothing to worry about. And then a neighbor happened to mention, well, you ought to get it checked into because I just have a friend that was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Yeah, we did have it biopsied and, um, and uh, it turned out to be thyroid cancer. Grady underwent a thyroidectomy followed by a course of radioactive iodine treatments that required him to be isolated. I had to be kind of quarantined because I was radioactive so no one could, you know, get within, I guess, 10 feet of me. So like the nurses had to like stay at the door in the hospital room and like hand me my food from there, I guess. So I mean, that was kind of creepy. I was kind of isolated for about, I guess, a week. But now I got a little sticker that, uh, that they put on my room that says, caution, radioactive material, so I keep that one. Grady recovered quickly. He was playing soccer and attracting the attention of top college programs. His health didn't deter the interest of Penn State coach Barry Gorman. We knew right off the bat that we were getting an athlete who was focused. We were getting a, a student who wanted to uh, do well. And we also knew that from a family point of view, it was very supportive and uh, very much behind Grady's wishes. Grady arrived in State College, Pennsylvania the following fall and immediately saw playing time. Like, honestly, the scare with the, the thyroid, um, I never, once that happened, I was like, oh, maybe my soccer career might be over. I don't know. Like, um, so it was kind of like a relief. Like, I got like, oh, okay, yes, I got my chance. Um, so it was awesome. Grady's first college season ended, off-season training began, and he noticed he was a little slow. We were doing some out-of-season conditioning, and he wasn't performing as well as uh, we knew he could. I actually got a call from Coach Gorman who uh, had requested that I meet with Grady because Grady had not been feeling well. I obtained some blood tests on Grady. At that point, I knew we had a problem. I went back to my dorm and just you know, hung out a little bit. And I got the call and it was Dr. Ackerman and he was like, okay, Grady, like we're a little worried. We think you may have leukemia. I was like, what, are you serious? Grady called us and said, the doctor says I have leukemia. And I said, Grady, that just can't be, that can't be possible. That's not true. You need to call the doctor back and have him do another test. They must have gotten the samples mixed up. The Renfros met that night with a Penn State pathologist. And then he started rattling off all the symptoms, like, do you have nosebleeds all the time? I was like, yeah, I get them like nonstop and they won't stop. He's like, uh, I'm like, are, you, are your gums bleeding when you brush your teeth? I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely doing that. He's like, do you have any bruising, like any significant bruising? I was like, no, no, I don't have any significant bruising. And I like scratched my arm. He's like, well, what about that one? And there was like a huge bruise, like all up and down this part of my arm. And the doctor, um, as we were walking out, said, don't let the looks of this child fool you. He's a really sick kid. The Renfros immediately took Grady home to Washington, D.C. and checked him into Georgetown University Hospital. He remained there for the next four months. Grady underwent three courses of intense chemotherapy bombs. I couldn't even spell leukemia, much less knew anything about it. 30% chance is the going rate for this procedure. That, that hits home pretty hard. And uh, that is when you have to just say, well, the statistics, statistics don't mean anything for us. We're just not going to worry about statistics. An old exercise bike was placed in Grady's room. It allowed him to look out at the Georgetown University practice fields, and it provided a unique motivation. I didn't have far to go in my room. I had like five feet to the bathroom and like five feet to the sink. So I didn't do a lot of movement. 
Um, and that was really my only way of getting any type of frustration out, other than like throwing things against the wall, I guess. During the soccer team practice, I'd be on my bike, like watching them practice. Grady's prognosis was good. He was released from the hospital. He returned to Penn State that fall. His body was ravaged by the cancer, but his will was stronger than ever. I was like, I'm definitely making a comeback. You know, I'm not taking anything for granted now. Like, I'm going to do it. After a year of rehab, Grady was able to rejoin his teammates on the field this season. In November, the Nittany Lions won the Big Ten Championship. I think his experiences have taught him to live every moment and to, to enjoy it. When he comes to practice, he's, he's bubbling and he's, and he's all set to go. You know, it's like a bird to get out of a cage. That energy is contagious. Never, 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 never give up. <laughs> I think is what I've learned from this experience. I'd say soccer was the main reason I beat cancer. Having that motivation and that, like, I guess that goal to like come back to something, to anything, was really what, what it was. Thank you.